I do want to. I want to talk about the traditional film industry sure. versus the indie film industry sure. and why indie film exists. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I, I'm new to Hollywood. So walk me through it. <laughs> what, what's been happening all these years? <laughs> so um, uh, we can talk about the the current film industry because obviously a lot is changing. But I'm curious about how it's structured, who are the gatekeepers of the traditional film industry. And I imagine that you might put it at a certain threshold or certain studios that develop films that would be called the industry. So for me, the big change happened in basically 89 uh, when Steven Soderbergh's Sex, Eyes, and Videotape won Sundance. That was the first time that I can remember, other than um, like Easy Rider and things like that, but there wasn't an industry. That was more of a fluke. There wasn't an industry be- behind that. And uh, when, I, when I say Easy Rider, uh, Dennis Hopper's movie, he, uh, he made a movie outside the studio system for like $175,000 a bunch, a bunch, about a bunch of hippies running around, you know, doing stuff. And, uh, and the studios were, you know, they were making Star Wars. Like they, they, they had no idea what the hell they hadn't, I don't think they had made Star Wars yet. Excuse me. They were still figuring things. 70s was really bad for the studios because they just didn't understand how to connect with the younger audience. So that's like, what do we do? What do we do? Like, well, these guys are in film school. Let's open the doors to them. And they gave the, the, the keys to the, the, the inmates and the inmates started running the asylum. And that's what happened with Scorsese, Spielberg, Coppola, these kind of guys. Uh, they were given free range. That, that moment in time is gone now. Uh, but for that moment, that's how they did it. And then when, the 90s came into play. That's where independent film as we know it today kind of started, in my opinion, where films like Mariachi, uh, Clerks, She's Gotta Have It, Slacker, all these movies were being done by independent voices outside of the studio system, and they weren't making a lot of money. You know, it's not like they made, you know, a ton of money. Uh, uh, Mariachi made like a million and a half, two million bucks. You know, Clerks probably pulled in a mill or something like that, a mill or two. Um, these guys weren't making bad, mad money yet, but that was starting of the starting of the industry. And for a while, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of money in the indie world, uh, money being put in, money putting in till, uh, the crash of 99. Then again, again, the crash of 2008, where things really radically changed after the crash of 2008, the technology started getting so cheap that now anybody can go make a movie. And then the, um, the Blair Witch Project came into play in the 90s, uh, which was uh, in, in, very instrumental in, in, in this whole thing. Paranormal Activity also came in uh, later. Um, the Saw movies, which were studio, but still very low budget. Mm-hmm. Um, these movies all started coming in. People started saying, hey, wait a minute, I could go do this. So the gatekeepers in the traditional world is this. Right now, there's a handful of studios. There's probably like five five big studios, and you can you could argue that Lionsgate's a, a mini studio. There's a couple of these little mini studios out there, but uh, these guys are about, they're all businesses now. They're not run by filmmakers anymore. They're run by uh, conglomerates. They're, they're monster things. Before the studios were run by actual filmmakers, by people who were in, that's all their business was. You know, Universal is owned, I don't know if they're owned by Bacardi anymore. They're owned by NBC. I don't know who owns who anymore, but you know, they're, they're run by, you know, Coca-Cola or, you know, a soft drink company or a liquor company, you know, or a news organization, whatever. They're not filmmakers. So what they do is they go, okay, well, um, we have all this new competition out there with streaming and everything else. What are we going to do? Well, we have to create spectacle. So now before they used to make 30 or 40 movies a year. Now they make five, but those five cost them 150 to $200 million plus about a hundred thousand, hundred million dollars in PNA money. Um, so, uh, promotions and advertising money. So, they're rolling the dice on less product, but the bigger product it is. So that's why all we see coming out of Hollywood mm-hmm. is generally reboots, established properties, because those are risk avert. They're being very risk avert. They don't want to take any risks. So when a movie like Deadpool shows up, and uh, they only, they literally were forced to make Deadpool, like literally were forced, and they gave them $30 million, which in the studio system is nothing. Yeah. And with that $30 million, that movie literally beat every superhero movie, not only of that year, but I think um, other than the Marvel stuff, it, I mean, it beat most of the Marvel stuff. Not the big stuff, but like a lot of the, the low, it, built, it beat every X-Men movie ever, mm-hmm. which is insane. Yeah. Uh, it beat so many, you know, uh, you know, Fantastic Fours, all this kind of stuff. And 
people were like, what the hell happened? I'm like, oh, wow, an original idea. People really want to go to an original movie. Mm-hmm. It was originally marketed. It was good. You can see that there was no studio involvement. Like They just kind of like, oh, let's let them do what they want to do. And because of that, look what happened. But generally speaking, you know, we got... And that, that doesn't change much. It changes it's, a little bit. A little bit. Well, look at it. It changed a, 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 thing, a bunch of stuff for us now because now it's a new property, but it's low budge. That cost me $35 million to make. It costs 35 million bucks to make. And it's made gazillions of dollars <laughs> now. So much money. It's so, a great movie too. <laughs> so the thing is that studios are, I'm hoping, and I think there's always going to be the tentpole. They always have to have the, the, the spectacle. You know, I'm going to go see the Star Wars movie coming out. I'm going to go see Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to go see these big, these big tentpole movies because they're fun. 